Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Turner with the Electrical and Computer Engineering Technologies Program at Purdue University, and you're watching a video lecture for ECET 273 Modern Energy Systems. Uh, today's video is part two in a four-part series on the use of AC power. In alternating current systems, the flow of electric charge periodically will reverse direction, unlike in a DC system in which the flow of electric charge is only in one direction. The abbreviations AC and DC are most often used to mean simply alternating and direct as when they modify current or voltage. The usual waveform of the North American AC electric power system is the sine wave with a frequency of 60 Hz. A sinusoidal waveform can be used to represent the cyclical increase and or decrease of a quantity over time. The oscillations of a voltage or current in an AC system can be modeled by the use of a sine wave function, meaning that these quantities quantities can be mathematically described by the trigonometric functions sine or cosine. So we can describe current and voltage in systems using sines and cosines. Although either function will work equally well, it's become kind of convention in the power industry to utilize the cosine form. An important caveat regarding AC is that the AC voltages and currents are periodic in time, meaning that they repeat over regular time intervals. However, by definition, trigonometric functions, sine and cosine and tangent, they have to have inputs that are angles, either in degrees or in radians. Therefore, in AC system, time will appear not in the accustomed units of seconds or minutes, but instead in terms of the angle of one of these sine or cosine functions. And we'll spend a lot of time going over that uh, in this lecture series. In mathematics, the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent are functions of an angle that relate the uh, angles of a triangle to the length of its sides. Right? Um, the sine of an angle is the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the hypotenuse. So sine is, uh, if we've got our right triangle uh, up here, we see that the uh, sine is the length of BC to uh, BA. We kind of casually refer to BC as the uh, opposite side, and uh, we kind of casually refer to the line segment AB here as the hypotenuse. Um, the cosine of an angle is the relationship between AC and AB. So cosine is what we call the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And uh, finally, we have uh, the tangent function, which is uh, opposite over adjacent, or BC over uh, AC. And uh, so uh, we've got one relation shown here for this triangle, and then we repeat the relation for sine of uh, theta here for this other triangle. So you can give a couple examples of using that. Um, these ratios are always constant for a given angle, and they don't depend on the size of the particular triangle. So these ratios, uv to ut, since it's uh, uh, the sine function, which is opposite over adjacent, it's the same as bc over ba, despite the fact that uh, uh, this triangle here and this triangle here are of, uh, are of different sizes. Often these definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent are remembered using a mnemonic device now, I always pronounce it SOKOTOA, where what that tells us is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So then you get SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. Alternatively, the trigonometric functions, instead of being defined by ratios of triangles, can be defined in terms of the unit circle. So a unit circle is a circle of radius one that's been centered at the origin. So the distance from this point here to this point here is one. And it's, this is the point zero comma zero, the origin of the xy plane. The utility of defining sine, cosine, tangent in terms of the unit circle um, 
is that it permits the definition of trig functions for all positive and negative inputs, not just for angles between zero and pi over two radians. So if we use the triangle, we're uh, limited to uh, triangles lying in the first quadrant, where if we extend it, we can actually have negative sides and things like that. And we know triangles can't have negative length sides, but using the unit circle allows us to extend that beyond the uh, pi over two, or 90 degrees. For any given point, x, y, so we're going to plot a point x, y on the unit circle. We draw a line from the point through the origin. So here's the origin. We draw this line here, right? And that line will uh, form a uh, ray or a vector that forms a uh, angle of uh, theta here. So that's the angle theta uh, with the uh, positive half of the x-axis. Um, so we've drawn a line on the unit circle. Uh, we've defined the angle theta. The xy coordinates, the x comma y coordinates of that point of intersection are equal to the cosine theta and the sine theta, respectively. So what we see is that if we take this point, the xy position, we drop the x portion of it down onto the x-axis. That gives us the cosine of the angle. And if we take its y component, and we move it over to the y-axis, that gives us sine of theta. From the unit circle representation, we can see that when specified in degrees, 360 degrees, or one full rotation, that's one oscillation of the circle, and when specified in radians, uh, there are two pi radians, or one complete oscillation. So any rotation further than 360 degrees, or further than two pi, it just gives us the same information as if we had just rotated less than once around. So for example, um, you know, if we rotated from this point to this point, that is in essence the same angle as if we rotate from this point all the way around the circle and back, right? The angle that that makes with the uh, positive x-axis is the same, no matter how many whole integer rotations you do. Now, that's what we mean by cyclical, right? Every 360 degrees of rotation, every two pi uh, radians of rotation, we just repeat the same functions over and over and over. So the plot of the sine and the cosine are then developed simply by rotating counterclockwise around the unit circle. So we take that vector that we just drew, you know, it's being shown here in this, this green. We have a unit circle here uh, with radius one in green and it's placed down here in the bottom right, right? In the middle of the circle, this little like a uh, yellow disc, is represented the angle theta that this, uh, this uh, ray is rotating through. This angle refers to the amount of counterclockwise rotation around the circle starting from the right and rotating around the x-axis as illustrated here. An exact copy of this little angle is shown at the top right. So we have this exact copy of this little angle um, as a visual illustration of the de definition of theta. So theta, you know, we see it's getting larger and larger up to 90 degrees. Now it's going to 180. Now it's going to 270. It's rotating back to 360. And we just see it keeps rotating around. And we could refer to that rotation as, you know, up to 540, or we could just re refer to it in terms of uh, one rotation, you know, gives you the same information. At this angle and starting at the origin, a green line, so we've got this green line radiating out here. Um, the green line is traced outwards radially. This line intersects the unit circle at a single point as it rotates, which is the green point spinning around at a constant rate. So you see this green point here spinning around at a constant rate as the angle theta changes, also at a constant rate. So what we're saying is that the, the rate of rotation is constant, so the, the rate that the angle is changing is constant, and the rate that this uh, dot rotates around the unit circle is constant. The vertical position of this point is projected straight along a faint red line here, so the vertical position, meaning the y position, right, is projected along this faint red line that you're seeing move up and down onto the graph of the left side of the circle. And this results in this red point being traced out, right? The y coordinate of this red point, the same as the y coordinate of the green point, is the value of the sine function evaluated at the angle theta, that is, the y coordinate of the green point equals the sine theta. As the angle theta changes, the red point moves up and down, tracing out this red graph. 
This is the graph for the sine function. The fate vertical line seen passing to the left are marking every quadrant along the circle that is at every angle of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Notice, however, that the sine curves goes from 1 to 0 to negative 1, then back to 0 at exactly these lines. This is reflecting the fact that sine of 0 degrees is 0, or sine of 0 radians is 0, that sine of pi over 2, or sine of 90 degrees, is equal to 1, sine of pi uh, radians, or sine of 180 degrees, is 0, and sine of 3 pi over 2, or sine of 270 degrees, is equal to negative 1. A similar process is done here with the x-coordinate of the green point. So we've got the x-coordinate, that's the, uh, the uh, horizontal coordinate of the green point. However, since the x-coordinate is tilted from the usual convention to plot a graph, uh, a unit operation was performed in order to repeat this process again in the same orientation instead of vertically. Uh, this is presented uh, by a bend seen kind of here on this top right, right? So we've got this bend to do a unit conversion from vertical to horizontal. Again, the green point is projected upwards along this faint blue line, and this bent projection ends up in the top graph's rightmost edge at the blue point that you're seeing move up and down here. This is the value of the cosine function evaluated at the angle theta. That is, the x-coordinate of the green point becomes equal to cosine of theta. The blue curve traced by this point as it moves up and down with changing theta is the graph of the cosine function. Notice again how it behaves as it crosses every quadrant, reflecting the fact that the cosine of zero radians is one, the cosine of pi over two radians is zero, the cosine of pi radians is negative one, and the cosine of three pi over two radians is zero. Notice that in both of these plots, that the arguments or inputs into the trigonometric functions are in terms of an angle, right? We talked about a cosine of an angle, a sine of an angle.